everybody. Uh, welcome to another episode of the GKC Show. Uh, Sam and I are uh, doing another duet today. Uh, so before we start, why don't you like, subscribe, comment, and uh, tell us to go screw ourselves, <laughs> if that's really what you want to say. Um, but uh, yeah, we got a lot of really interesting stuff going on this week in the space. Uh, Sam, you were out at a conference in Wyoming. I kind of want to hear all about it. I've heard you, you know you dropped some bits and pieces, but I kind of want to hear the whole story. So uh, why don't you yeah. take it away? So first of all, uh, so I don't know. If, uh, Obviously, you guys rewatch these things seven to eight times, I'm sure. So you've noticed the past, <laughs> the past few weeks I've been chuckling as we've started. This is the first time Mark has gotten through the intro without having to back out. <laughs> 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 That's it. To, uh, oh, I didn't hit record. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I keep telling him to record this stuff so we can do an outtake thing at the end of the year. But uh, uh, yeah. maybe we'll start doing that now. Um, so, uh, yeah, out in Wyoming last year for the Wyoming Blockchain Stampede. It was at the University of Wyoming. And I had met some people who um, are living out there. And I, I don't, for those of you who don't know, Wyoming is kind of trying to establish themselves as the Silicon Valley of crypto. Um, and they're doing it through a partnership with the state legislature and the governor's mansion. So um, they're doing pretty much everything in their power to make it a crypto friendly space. Um, you can incorporate a DAO in Wyoming. Um, I believe this is still the only state you can do that. In Montana, or sorry, in um, Colorado, you can do something similar, but it's not actually called a DAO. Um, so I'll get a little bit off, off of topic right there. Um, so that's really, really important. One of the pa the panel that I was on while I was there, uh, I was talking with an attorney from um, from Denver, and she was uh, telling a story of this actually happened recently. I forget the name of the DAO, but there was a DAO in uh, a company based in California. The company was doing some sh shady stuff, and they ended up bringing charges directly against the DAO members. So the ones that they could track down, the ones that had mm -hmm. docked themselves as um, you know, they went after they're going after the members themselves, which is a problem because if if you're not actually a legal entity as a DAO, then you're just a bunch of people who are voting on stuff and okay. you can be held liable for anything. I mean, it's the reason any of us create LLCs for the companies that we start. It's a shield. It's so the cool. LLC is the, the entity, the business entity is what is liable and whatever's going on. I mean, you can be personally liable for, for malfeasance, but it's a really, really important thing. And especially, you know, NFT.com is going to be DAO run. So these are questions that we're going to have to ask and things that we're going to have to address going forward. Um, so yeah, that was a little bit off, off topic, but um, yeah, so that's one of the things in Wyoming. Um, they're just really, really focused on Web3 and crypto and making sure that um, you know, they're as friendly as possible. So, uh, and this is a cooperation with the University of Wyoming as well. So the, the University of Wyoming Center for Blockchain and Digital Innovation. We actually have a center at the university that's, that's specifically awesome. targeted to blockchain and Web3, which is pretty interesting and innovative. There's a lot of campuses around the country that are doing kind of things. You know, the NYU um, Blockchain and Pepperdine, I know, has some stuff. And obviously, I'm doing some stuff at the Fashion Institute. Um, but Wyoming is really taking it up a notch. Yeah. I think I think we are going to see you universities once again be the epicenter for the next boom. Um, I, you know, after three or four years of of the uh, the and I don't want to say kids, but the enrollment at universities being there and having access to blockchain technologies and distributed ledgers and and, and all this wonderful stuff they're going to start the next Facebooks and, uh, and Googles and things like that out of, out of the knowledge that they're building right now. It's, it's, it's incredible to see. And I'm really excited for, for the explosion of, of real world. And it feels like it, like I was just, I was telling you right before the show, like karate combat is a, is a real, is a real league that's taking advantage of distributed ledgers and stuff like that. So these real world things are, are really starting to come to fruition. Um, and, and I love seeing, you know, states get involved. That, that's another thing that I think is, is really super important is as, as we all start launching these legitimate businesses, we need to know that the state government that we're working with is 
is not going to screw us over or, or understands what it is we're doing and can help guide us and, and give us, you know, answer questions that we don't have answers to um, regarding, you know, taxes and liability and, and all this kind of stuff that, uh, you know, every other business has to go through, but nobody really knows what to do with the crypto people. <laughs> and that's the thing. I mean, we're we're writing the book on all this stuff as we go. For sure. So, um, you know, if in a state like Wyoming, you have the opportunity to to make sure you're compliant, essentially. Mm -hmm. So they, they're they're writing the laws, they're creating the the precedents and the the, the case law in the courts that's going to define. Uh, unfortunately, the, the federal government seems nowhere near to trying to make a decision. On... No, they're years, they're years and years away from being yeah. able to make decisions on what to do with crypto. <laughs> and honestly, it's holding us all back because mm -hmm. we should be like this country, we should be innovating, we should be on the forefront of this. And because of total lack of inertia in Washington, and this isn't a political thing, this is both sides. This is this isn't a Republican Democrat thing. No, no, it's not at all. Things aren't getting done that need to get done. Like companies need to know what they can do, what they can't do, and then so therefore they can innovate appropriately. Well, that, that's why I think companies like Immutable X are are really important because it gives people a point of entry into uh, a, a crypto holding company that kind of is handling all of that regulatory stuff on their own. And it, so it gives you a place to be able to put your legitimate money into legitimate projects that have that are almost entire. I don't know if they're entirely crypto exposure or if, if Immutable is involved in any other kind of revenue streams that are traditional capital. Um, I'm not sure, but you know, that's a, a, a really easy way to be able to get into crypto and not have to worry about whether or not you're being regulatory regular i can't say that word regulatorily <laughs> compliant <laughs> i don't even know if it is a word but I mean, <laughs> yeah we're not, i'm making more up words anyway <laughs> um yeah i mean it's it, it's it's worrisome that that other other countries are, are, are just passing us by because mm -hmm because these things aren't in place. So a place like Wyoming is where you go to say, listen, I'm going to be as compliant as I possibly can because these are the laws that are in front of me. This is, you know, and listen, it's it's tough because of the, you know, so much of what was born in crypto, which is, you know, the, the ease of the rug pulls and the, um, you know, the bad actors that were involved. But as this whole world of web3 evolves it's they're going to be real businesses they're going to be real companies and I, th I think if you go into it with the the mindset of trying to do something good and build something with some integrity you're probably going to be okay in the long run but still talk to a lawyer talk to a uh, there were a bunch of panels with attorneys saying you know just talk to someone try to there was a presentation from one of the sec commissioners when i was there and uh, she was saying, uh, you know, the best thing you can do if you're not sure, just reach out literally to the SEC and say, it may take them some time to get back to you, right. but just by reaching out and reach out with specific questions and say, these are the things, you know, am I okay to continue with this? And even if the laws aren't necessarily in place right now, they could say, yeah, you're probably okay with this, but keep abreast of, you know, this, these things that are going on. Well, even so, first off, I want to say I love states like Wyoming that are taking an open approach to it and saying, let's let's adopt this. Let's get people in here and then let's help with them build the the regulatory infrastructure, you know, within our state so that they can flourish. And and people will I'm sure that that is a, it's a very low population state. I'm sure that they would love to have people flocking into their state to start businesses because that would be great for for the residents of Wyoming, a larger tax base that's bringing in revenue globally. Um, it's it's a brilliant move, and I don't know why more states don't do it. I mean, it's great to see Puerto Rico doing stuff like that, but it's like hello. United States, this is one of your territories that is like blazing past you in this space. Yeah, I mean, there are 49 other states that are just behind the curve, and it's just that, sure. you know, that, that's just stagnant nature of so many um, of so many federal and local governments. It's just it's just things aren't getting done, and it's a problem. Yeah. Um, so 
uh, yeah, so with all that in mind, so again, University of Wyoming obviously is, they're, they're involved with the local businesses, they're involved with the legislature, everybody's kind of working together to make this happen. So I was inspired when I got back, I minted uh, nft.com slash UW. Nice. And I'm going to donate it to the school so that um, students. Five, will... That was a nice move. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm going to donate it to the school so that students who are working on NFT projects can list them on NFT.com. And I think it'll, That's cool. you know, as we're members of the GKC, so I think it'll be an awesome opportunity for the GKC to kind of spearhead a um, relationship between nft.com and the university of wyoming where all this innovation is going on um, there's some cool like the kids are are we call them kids I just tell them so yeah it's old. tough to do right yeah they're... i know <laughs> you can't not because you look at them and you're like wait do you even shave how old are you I'm 24. um but yeah um there's one come one uh group of students who are starting a company that's essentially uh, they want to get um, existing students, you know, starting from freshman year up to work on projects and kind of build their resumes. And they're just trying to be almost like a matchmaker service between students mm -hmm. who are just learning and projects who need to get stuff done. And I think that's awesome. Um, there's, yeah, there's just a, a really, it's a sense of, you know, that sense of collaboration that we feel all the time in Web3, like you have it within that kind of community of Wyoming. Um, so yeah, like I said, I'm going to, um, donate nft.com slash UW and hopefully nft.com can, uh, get involved with them as well and start nurturing some of these, uh, some of these students and the projects that they create. Nice. So I, I am on the opposite end of the spectrum from Wyoming. I live in the state of Connecticut. It is not as it stands a very crypto friendly place. As a matter of fact, I, I believe at the moment that Coinbase is the only place I am legally allowed to trade crypto on. I don't think that Binance or any of the other exchanges <clears throat> are allowed. I get a while back. I used to get my credit card declined to be able to, uh, to make purchases you can't, from there. You can't purchase from fiat. Right. You can't purchase from the like. I can't make a bank bank transfer. I can't even like have an account. So I guess I can have an account set up, but I can't. It won't allow me to on ramp or off ramp anything from it. Um, so, with that said, I decided to, with my project Tangle of Words, approach the state of Connecticut and say, like, so they have these business development programs for entrepreneurs uh, that go through University of Connecticut. So, I reached out to them, and actually, just yesterday, I got set up with an advisor, and I'll have my first meeting very soon. But they have somebody who is a, you know, I don't know if they're a crypto specialist, but somebody who is uh, knowledgeable in the space that can kind of help me work through things. And I believe I might be one of the first crypto companies to go to them to ask for assistance. Um, so I'm hoping that this will bring some awareness within the state of Connecticut as to, you know, what crypto is useful for, how NFTs are used, what, you know, what this whole thing is all about so that it will help to maybe inform some of the legislation in the state of Connecticut so that they can make it a little easier to work with this kind of stuff instead of um, making it so difficult for businesses to operate that they just go elsewhere. Because if this doesn't, I, word to the state of Connecticut, if you can't make this thing work for me, it gets started somewhere else. It's just too easy to try it, to start a business in, a, in another state or another country where it's legal to be able to do business like that. So, you know, please, you know, state of Connecticut, yeah. may do, do what you can to make this as easy for me as possible or... I'm out of here. I, I'll relocate to Wyoming. I don't care. <laughs> Either that or they'll make an example out of you and throw you in jail. So if you do right. Oh, well, that, you know, so, but then boom, I'm, I'm in Puerto Rico or I'm in Wyoming or I'm out somewhere in the Azores or That's okay. <laughs> so, well, I'm in so a small worry. island in the middle of the Pacific under the letter A or in the, <laughs> in the Atlantic under the letter A. For our uh, followers, <laughs> don't worry. Um, they have internet access in, in prison, so. Mark will continue to do the GKC show even in a I will do the GKC show from prison. I, I'll paint yeah. my my prison cell. This actually is a prison cell. I just <laughs> painted the wall green. <laughs> you can. They let me keep a couple things like my NFT.com yeah. hat and. Uh, but otherwise. No, I mean it's the, the point. The point is, it's so important that that states follow suit with Wyoming and states uh -huh. get involved in this stuff because 
like the the lack of action is an action of its in and of itself so like the fear of you know oh well we don't want to do it wrong or whatever like put it out there because not doing anything is way worse than doing the wrong thing well, in this situation and here's the other thing not doing anything creates a resentment towards that industry within the the general population if the general population is allowed to just keep pushing people that are involved in crypto into this convenient basket of hatred that they have for them um then then nothing is going to change but when states start to embrace it and say like look this isn't all just this isn't smoke and mirrors like people are creating real world utility that can solve real world problems they need to be able to develop these businesses because because one of these ideas is going to be a, a massive company and i use company in quotation marks because it could very well be a dow that is owned by you know the general population of that area uh, as well and, and that's that's something that it, it would be a real shame for states to miss out on the opportunity for new businesses that run from a difficult a different ethical standpoint than current businesses right when you have the general population that's an ownership of that business they're going to make sure that that business is making the right ethical uh decisions for them as as residents yeah, I mean, talking about new technologies, one of the um, other, unfortunately, few uh, H-barbarians who were at the conference, uh, I'm not sure if you're familiar, if anybody's familiar with, uh, should be, if you're into Hedera, a project called DROP. Yeah, so, with two Ps, D-R-O-P-E. Yeah, yep. um, their uh, CEO, Sashil, um, was out there, and we talked at length, uh, you know, Hedera geeks always seem to find yeah. each other. Uh, it's a pretty amazing project. Uh, yeah. They've managed to, to make micropayments profitable, which is micropayments being like fraction of a penny payment. And it's only obviously only possible on Hedera with fraction of a fraction of a penny um, transaction fees. But the the potential for it is is out of this world. That's something cool that you get when you go to these conferences. You get to meet mm -hmm. people at projects and see them up close. But I mean, think about an economy that would be, you know, a like on a YouTube uh, channel was a fraction of a, a, an actual payment. It's not YouTube that is paying you because they get the money from the advertisers and then they, they pay you a fraction of that. Someone likes what you're doing, like your, likes your content, they can pay you immediately, a fraction of a penny. Yeah. And a lot of them add up. Think of what it could mean for uh, creators and artists and musicians where their royalties are based on people actually watching and using their products. I mean, there's always the middleman or uh, the middle person <laughs> who is involved in all of this. So if uh, you know someone creates something and they put it on YouTube, that's great. They get a billion likes. Fantastic. YouTube takes all the advertising revenue and then they give a little bit to the creator. So cut YouTube out of it. Make it about you know the directly from the the consumer to the creator. Well, and, YouTube, YouTube alone could save probably a billion dollars by making payments in smaller increments to people as they go and, and not having to accrue all this accounting and, you know, paying out in larger sums. They would keep their they would keep their creators happier because there's just a steady flow of, of income that's coming in and at a lower cost so they can get a larger percentage of it. But I'm sure Google winds up, yeah. taking, you know, well, that extra yeah. goes into their pocket, but, but they would use the technology to be able to make their creators happy first and they would get the leftover, which is fine. I mean, that's how businesses operate. Well, I mean, here's so several concerns. And this is something we talked, like people talked about a lot at the uh, last week was there's a war coming between web three and establishment businesses. For sure. Because all of these things that we talk about with, you know, micropayments and lower transaction fees, and I mean, you don't think MasterCard and Visa and American Express are terrified of transactions running on Hedera. They charge 3% uh, right. a transaction. And part of that is because it's expensive to run on these on these platforms and it's expensive to get that kind of speed. But yeah, merchant fees. Off. Yeah, you're right. Merchant fees are the majority of credit cards income. It's not based on interest that they earn off of you yeah. and stuff like that. It's all the merchant fees that at gas stations and blah, 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 because they do. They charge to, from three to five yeah. percent um, per and transaction. That's all transaction. And, and the, the thing, like when you were talking about YouTube saving all this money and it being passed on, I mean, in an ideal world, yes. 
but the problem is all of these pieces of um, just paperwork and the bureaucracy that goes through a transaction that makes it a 5% transaction, everybody's getting a piece along the way. And there's lots of people who have figured out how to make money on these inefficiencies and how to make money on these, you know, these things that are not good for the consumer or the creator. And they're going to fight back because yeah. at the end of the day, they're losing cash. Well, and um, you're right. Someone with these new tools, someone else is going to spin up a competitor to YouTube that is easier to use, uh, you know, m more friendly for creators, uh, a better user experience for viewers, and they're going to blow right past YouTube, just like YouTube blew right past everybody else when they started. And that's the thing. I mean, if you think about like the, and I, listen, I'm a capitalist. I, I I believe in working hard and making money and, and mm -hmm. all that stuff. So, but if you think about the way things are structured now, you have the two most important actors in in everything are the creator and the consumer. Mm -hmm. So the creator creates something, the consumer consumes it, and that's where that's a, that's the transaction. Right. Um, but as it exists now, you have the creator, the consumer, and then all of this stuff that has to go through to get from the creator to the consumer. Mm -hmm. Now, the internet has been uh, has broken down a lot of those barriers where. Um, and this is, you know, history repeats itself. This is, yeah. there, there was, there was fight back from traditional brick and mortar businesses when the internet started. Um, I was reading an article a couple of weeks ago about um, how Barnes and Noble, um, it, how local bookstores were so against Barnes and Noble, but now local bookstores and Barnes and Noble are working together to be against Amazon. Right. So, um, it's the same thing. The brick and mortar is fought against the internet, and now the internet establishment, the Googles, the Facebooks, um, are going to fight against Web3. And But at the end of the day, it's going to be tough. It's going to be bloody. We're going to have to fight. It's going to take some time. But at the end of the day, the better technology wins out, and Web3 is the mm -hmm. better technology. And then that will win out until 30 years from now when something else comes up, and that fights against then Web3 is the establishment. And these things happen in cycles. Yeah. But we just happened to all be lucky enough to be here at the birth of Web3. Yeah, and, well, and, and at, at Web2, you had this, um, well, not even in Web1 a little bit, but but you had a transformation in the music industry, like you were saying, and, and it empowered a lot of musicians to be able to distribute their work. <clears throat> but the record label still had, and, and the radio industry and music industry as a whole, still had a stranglehold on attention um, and the distribution of income from radio and stuff like that. All that stuff has to go through. I can't remember that BMG or, or whatever the. Uh, yeah, well, whatever the, the organization is that takes in streaming re revenue and distributes it back out to everybody else. <laughs> so they still have a stranglehold on the revenue stream. But Web3 changes that. Now you can take the tool that you, you gained for distribution in Web2 and add on the, the monetization aspect of it and the decentralization of distribution uh, in, in the ease of grabbing attention, then that changes the whole game. All of a sudden now these record labels that were fighting to stay alive are are going to wind up having to again they'll still in a capitalist society they'll still provide a, a useful service right they'll be able to market people's music and stuff for them but they will get a much smaller piece of of that pie because the because the system uh or you know the what's the word that i'm looking for uh you know the the path to market is a lot smoother for for everyone. I mean, listen, again, all of this happened before. We went from mm -hmm. CD, then Napster came out, and the record companies fought it and fought it and fought it. And, you know, Lars from Metallica went out, right. and was a, whatever. And uh, eventually, you know, what happened was what was always going to happen, which is the record company said, okay, this is better. We're going to have to start streaming stuff. Right. So then they start streaming stuff, and they're making a smaller. Uh, net revenue than they did when they were they, when they had you know LPs and cassettes and CDs, but they understand that that's where the industry is going. So they're going to have to adapt again now. But the problem is, despite the fact that this is history repeating itself, nobody learns any lessons. So they they're still going to fight back instead of just getting yeah. to the end of the sentence and saying, "Listen, this is where it's going to end up. 
let's figure out how to be profitable in this new world. They're going to fight and fight and fight and push back. And then we're going to end up where we were going to end up anyway. Yeah. For a species that's really good at pattern recognition, we're really not that good at pattern recognition. <laughs> no, I think we're good at pattern recognition. We're just not good at changing behavior. Like it's, yeah, you know, I guess yeah, that's that's a very yeah. good point. It's like uh, <laughs> uh, Napoleon going to uh, fight and going to Russia. I've got a great idea. Oh, it's a bad idea. Yeah, I then, I've got a better idea. No, it's the same idea. <laughs> that's funny. Uh, so so what else we got to talk about here today um i did want to i talked a little bit about that that uh karate combat thing i think that that's really cool <clears throat> that is uh hedera is a huge sponsor of it i think that nft.com uh could jump in on that and be a sponsor of it as well and come up with some some really unique ideas of of how to you know work and i'm sure they've got to be thinking about nfts for this thing anyway um Without a doubt. And I mean, I think the, the biggest thing, I'm such a broken record on these things. We've talked, how many times have we talked about collaboration and getting involved and all that stuff? Like, I can't tell the number of people, like the, like I said, these students from UW were talking to CEOs of, of companies with, you know, hundreds of million dollars of revenue. It just put yourself out there. If you want to be involved in Web3 more than just talking on Discords, if you want to make it a career, if you want, Get out there. I mean, there are so many like there are projects. Like, if reach out to me, you know, hit me up on Discord. Like, I there's plenty of projects I'm personally working on. There's plenty of projects I know people are working on that are mm -hmm. looking for with every skill set: a developer, a social media person, somebody to moderate Discords, somebody to just have ideas, or artists. Absolutely, like across the board, I guarantee you, there's a skill set you have that somebody in Web3 is looking for. And for the sure. only way you're going to meet that person <clears throat> is to put yourself out there. That is that is probably some of the best advice that you can get in this space, and I guess in just in life in general, just, right? If if you get out there and are involved in stuff, all of a sudden things start happening, and and that's just a result of you being present for for the thing to develop. You know, it's one you know. I've got a couple of young kids. My son is in high school now, and he's kind of a quiet and shy kid, but he's starting to get involved in more stuff in school and is realizing like, oh, I'm making more friends now, and I've got things to talk about, and I've got, right, right? Life is starting to become a little bit more fruitful for him just for, for getting more involved in stuff. So yeah, I mean, and especially in the crypto space, there's so much need for just bodies to be able to do work. <laughs> That yeah, it's silly not to be involved in it. And to learn, like, even if you don't feel like you have a skill set, just reach out and somebody right. will teach you. Somebody will help you along. If you're willing mm -hmm. to put blow up your sleeves and do a little work, I mean, to, to your point, half of success is just showing up. Yeah. You know, um, so just show up. Well, and it the rest of it is taking advantage of the opportunity that presents yeah. itself in front of you when you do show up. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it can be really easy in this world that we live in to just you know, sit behind your phone or behind your computer and interact with the discord and say, you know, somebody comes up with a great, Oh, I'll put some H bars into that. But like, you're never going to, you know, unless you were lucky and invested in Shiba Inu at, you know, a $500,000 market cap or something like that. And that rarely happens. Just, well, because you have to be in order to be that person, you have had to have been involved so that when the opportunity came up, you knew that it was time to strike. So, I mean, that I feel like that's why I got into Hedera. I spent my entire life, I remember when Tesla went public and I didn't have enough money to invest in it. Uh, you know, I, I remember when Google went public and I didn't have money to invest in it. You know, so this, this big stretch of my life that I was like, you know, working hard to be able to earn the things that I wanted. <clears throat> I was missing out on opportunities to be able to grow real wealth. And then as soon as I saw Hedera come along, I was like, holy crap. I was like, I can't miss out on that. And then from that point forward, I've not like NFT.com. Like, yes, this has got yes written all over it. I, get, I will show up and be involved <laughs> from the beginning and, and an opportunity will hopefully present itself. And then so it did. I mean, that's technically what this show is. It's taking yeah. advantage of an opportunity within a new space that I that seems like it has a lot of enormous potential so i mean this 
whole this whole the GKC show started out when you were on Discord and you said, "Hey guys, I'm thinking about doing a podcast this weekend." Right. Really join? <laughs> and I was like, "Yeah, I'll join." And right. Then we did one. It was the week before uh, Wagme. Remember, we yep. did our first one, and then we did. I did one from NFT NYC, and it just kind of. Like, yeah, now, you want to just keep doing these? <laughs> and yeah, like, yeah. And now we are we are at seventeen subscribers. Kids, this, this can be this you is one. where <laughs> this is where your life can take you if you focus and you work hard <laughs> and and you provide it's, it's, value it's, 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 to a community. Seventeen people will yeah. show up and not say anything in the comments. They're not smashing the like <laughs> button. <laughs> We have to change these behaviors, right? Like you said, right? Yeah. It's it's difficult for humans to change their behavior, um, but it's very easy for us to recognize patterns that are are not beneficial to us. So for all of our viewers, bad behavior to not be smashing the like button. You need to change we, your behavior and start. We will, we will reach out to every one of you to chastise. Yeah, them. one on yeah. if you need I one have on. Yeah, if you need one on run one instructions from Sam or I on how to smash like buttons, just hit us up in the comment section. Yeah. Wait, is that a? Yeah. <laughs> I think we just inception like there because we're trying like to get people even, uh, coming to America with Louis Anderson, where he's like, uh, one more months, I move up to head fry guy. Two years, <laughs> I'm assistant manager, and that's when the real money rolls in. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Well, I think we are going way off the rails. Yeah, and I, I think, think we are just right. going over time a touch. And so this is probably a good place for us to uh, say thank you all for watching. Um, tune in next week uh, for another exciting episode of the GKC show. And yeah, Sam, and sum it, up. If you guys, yeah sum it up. If you guys want to get involved, reach out to me, reach out to somebody. I'm happy to connect you. Tell me what you want to do, and I'll try to find somebody to connect you with. Seriously. Cool. And me too. I'm open to if anybody's looking for, you know, wants to get involved in projects, I'm starting to get a lot more involved in, in, in other communities and projects as well. And I'm noticing like, hey, these people need, you know, administrators and, you know, marketing people and all that kind of crap. Yeah. All right. Very good. Peace. Hey, everybody. See you later.